And for all of this, who better to talk to than uh, Dr. R. S. Sharma, former chairman of the Telecom Regulatory Authority of India, now working, of course, to help us all with our health care. So, well, Dr. Sharma, thank you so much uh, for joining us. I can't think of a better person to help us find a solution. You've been chairman TREI. Now you're looking after all of our collective health, and I can tell you nothing bothers our health more, damages it more than the constant ringing of phones, uh, but it being a spam call. We can't, we can't work, we can't function because the phone rings every five minutes and it's somebody calling us with a spam message. Please help us, sir. What's the solution to this? How do we solve the problem? Well, thank you very much, Vikram, for having me uh, and, and you know, posing that question to me. I'm not very sure whether I have a solution ready-made in, in my hands, but nevertheless, I'll be able to give you my, uh, you know, sort of views. So one is that, uh, you know, as you rightly say, things have become, things are becoming worse and worse because not only now you have spams, you also have scams. And actually, all kinds of stuff is happening. Today morning itself, I got a call on an IVR system to say that I'm calling from FedEx. And, you know, then the guy started telling me that, you know, this, this is your address, this is your name. And then he said, oh, you, we have a packet which you had sent from Bombay to Russia. Yeah. I realized, what is this? I mean, I never sent any packet from any place to any place. You know, Dr. Sharma, I got almost exactly that same call, which I also almost fell for until the guy said, you've sent a package to Myanmar. And I said, oh, my God, this is this is a scam. But you know what? So you're the former chairperson of Try. But if even you can answer that call and almost fall for it for a, for a few uh, seconds or a minute, it means somebody who's in a distant place, rural India, somebody not that tech savvy, somebody elderly may well be taken for a ride. They may actually fall for that scam. So it's, it's really serious. Yeah, absolutely. So, so let, let us you know, deal with the first issue of a spam, not really a scam, because a scam is a much larger uh, sort of stuff and they can actually lure you into, into conversation and then ask you to do something which you willingly, you know, do and then, you know, ultimately are trapped by them. So let's, let's forget that. But the other part, which is basically calls saying that, you know, you have to buy property or this is uh, some other offer or that offer. So this is bank, loan, you know, all kinds of, uh, you know, spam calls uh, keep on coming. And that is a real nuisance. So essentially, there are uh, three, four dimensions to this. As far as I know, of course, my knowledge may be a little obsolete, but but then I think whatever I can recall. One is the uh, you know telemarketers. So telemarketers, which have their legitimate business of you know sort of marketing, uh, telemarketing on behalf of some companies or some banks or some institutions. That is one set of uh, you know uh, persons in this this uh, business, and they actually uh, there are you know promotional calls, there are transactional calls like OTP and stuff like that. So essentially, what is happening is that the TRAI a few years back had actually started to templateize these calls, these these SMSs and and these calls also, and essentially they had said that there should be the number should be there and there should be a DND uh, situation, do not disturb. And if I subscribe to the DND, then I should not be, you know, giving that, uh, getting that call. But you know, Dr. Sharma, a lot of people are subscribed to DND. I know this is something that you and, uh, uh, you know, DRA and others have been following for a while. A lot of people do subscribe to DND, but that doesn't stop it. The calls are still coming through. And when you tell the person, how are you calling me when I have subscribed to DND? How did you get my number? Then they just disconnect it quickly. But the harassment has already happened. So, so, so let, let me let me put it this way: the the way the registered telemarketers are expected to work is that they, when they have a list of telephone numbers which they are supposed to call, they scrub this list with the DND list. And, and in a zero knowledge proof in the sense that without really, you know, divulging any information, they get back the list of the people, the list of the phone numbers which are not on DND. So therefore they are allowed to call. So if there is a registered telemarketer, he or she does that kind of calling. Unfortunate part is that it is the calls are not coming from a registered telemarketers. 
calls are coming from unregistered actual you know numbers if you see those numbers they are the actual numbers you know they are not the telemarketing numbers so that is essentially the how does it happen that it happens that some institutions give the calls to you know give the contract to telemarketers telemarketers in turn give the contracts to some guys who basically have some sim and they are you know they throw out calls 100 calls a day and when somebody complains they throw the sim and then start getting another call so the question of course is that as a user what can you do now i, I can tell you at least in my personal case a lot of the calls that seem to be coming are, let's say from random 731 numbers so if i get a call from a 731 number or 791 or whatever it is that is automatically auto block it but it's like swatting flies because there are 10 different numbers that are calling you every single day no so, so the other other issue is how do you block these numbers right so blocking these numbers used to take a lot of time earlier which is basically about 10 days because suppose you are a customer of vodafone and you get a call from somebody from geo now you complain to your service provider which is vodafone vodafone in turn finds out that the caller was from geo they tell geo and geo in turn you know starts an inquiry into the into the call so that's that's how it it happens so number one there has to be a good complaint system absolutely you know instantaneous and that is what we had employed blockchain into doing this so that as soon as a complaint is received immediately that complaint is put on a blockchain and that blockchain is accessible by all the operators and immediately whichever operator that caller had belongs to that operator is able to take instantaneous action so therefore the trouble is nipped in the butt but the critical factor here is do you have a good complaint system the trai had done an application called dnd and which was very very friendly somehow or the other i find that that application is no more working and mm -hmm. and once you don't don't have any application working then how do you make a complaint to whom do you complain so that yeah. is a that's a problem which has happened. Uh, Lakshma, do you think the owners can also be put on the, the banks or the clients, the people who are asking for these calls to be made? I mean, for example, 30-40% of the calls I get are from a couple of banks. So do you think the owners can be put on them to say, why are these telemarketers calling people on a D&D list uh, ostensibly from your bank? They have to take, take the responsibility for that. Absolutely. This is, this is already factored in, into the regulation of TRAI that any institution or any you know uh, any entity which is actually using the telemarketers to do telemarketing that entity must be made responsible if there is an unauthorized telephone which actually is making calls but mm -hmm. that all that vikram will happen only when you have a very robust com robust and easy complaint system i mean if you if you just talk to some uh, other uh, you know or your operator your operator will take 30 minutes you know press one, press three, press five, and, and all that. So therefore, if there is a very easy way of complaining, saying that I got this uh, phone from this number, and this number basically just, uh, you know, on this subject, and that's about all. This is what the DND application of TRAI did. But unfortunately, on my phone, at least, it's not working. Well, of course, it's not as if, uh, you know, the government of TRI are not seized with this entire problem. They've been trying to take some steps. Some solutions have been uh, come out just a few days back. What you make of them, do you think perhaps they, will, they could make a difference in, in, uh, in fixing the problem? No, the current efforts are in the right direction, in my view, because essentially what is going to happen is that if I receive a call, I have a right to know as to who is calling me. Unfortunate part in that is the, the fact of the matter is that, you know, in villages, etc., or whatever, you know, people get sims and, you know, those sims are used by my children, by somebody else. So it may not be perfectly 100% correct because what is going to be displayed is actually the actual customer in whose name that particular sim has been issued, not really the guy who is calling. So so that may create, but but that is not a major problem because ultimately, in whose name the sim has been issued if that person has given its sim to somebody else and and his name is coming then there's not a much of a problem so so i think it's a right effort in the right direction and it does not violate any privacy or anything like that because ultimately if i'm calling you you have a right to know as to who is calling 
And also said that helps in one other manner, which is that if there is somebody whom you would like to take a call from, you know, the problem is that I think in most of our cases, our phones are just off. So if anybody calls me, for example, from an unknown number, they can never reach me because the phone is off. And it could be an important person. It could be a genuine emergency, uh, but they can't reach me because my phone is off. So at least if something is flashing up and I recognize the name, I will answer the call, uh, unknown number, I will not answer. So that, I guess, is the big advantage of what is now being proposed by the TRAI. The, the TRAI currently is actually quite uh, concerned by this fact and, and uh, now because the scams are also happening. So this okay. is another area where we need to deploy technology. And you know, in a large scale situation like this, it is not some one or two caller and one or two complaints which will be registered. There should be a very good way of registering complaints. And as I suggested, you know, large number of people should make those those apps which which actually can just generate complaint and you know push that to TRAI's uh, backend, which they can take action. So that is how I think the this is a solution in the in the medium and the long run. All right, uh, Dr. Harish Sharma, former chairperson of TRAI, thank you so much for being with us.